G'day friends, welcome to today's video. I'm gonna give you a bit of a coloring tutorial today. Nothing too crazy, nothing too in depth, but I did just wanna show you how simple it was to get something quite effective. So, uh, what you're going to need is, I'd say a coloring sheet, but I haven't released these just yet. Uh, they'll be up soon. Actually, maybe they are up by the time this video goes up. I'm not quite sure, but I'm pre-filming this. Um, these are my deluxe coloring cards. So, I did mention before that the cold press is no longer an option. Never fear, this is the hot press. So that's what we're going to be working with today. This is the white option and there is also a craft option. So what you're going to want is, uh, I guess, something to color in. This could be your own drawing. It doesn't have to be a coloring sheet. I'm going to tape this down with my Scotch edge lock. Now this is just to stop my hot press paper from warping and buckling a lot because I do add a lot of water and a lot of washes. So um, that's why I do like to tape it down. Just remember when you're using this tape to actually push it in. Um, it is really great. It does lock in your edges provided you have pushed the tape down. So uh, just with a clean finger I would run over that and, uh, and you'll be all good to go. Now I'm just going to fold this over so I don't... I'm just giving away this fact that this is not a real white table here. <laughs> I've said before, this is actually just a backdrop from um, Northern Drops on Etsy. It's just a paper, um, high quality printed photo, I guess. And um, I use it because I think it looks a lot brighter than just the plain brown desk. And it also keeps my desk protected. I don't really worry about getting pencils and scratch marks on this because it's a piece of paper I can uh, replace. The desk, not so easy or cheap to replace. So I've taped it all down. We're going to need some, uh, whatever mediums you want to color and play with. Uh, but today I'm gonna to be showing you some watercolor. I'm gonna show you a little bit of pencil and some alcohol marker, maybe some pens and ink. I don't know, I added a lot to this. So um, we'll just go through. I'll keep it here for reference. Although I don't think you'll really need to follow along that closely. Now I've got a jar of water here. I've got some brushes and a paper towel. I really don't think you're gonna need much more than that. But uh, if you do, I'll let you know. I have a craft smart brush here. This is a Taclon brush. Now I am so not a brush snob, it's not funny. As long as the brush works and I like the way it works, then I'm, I'm gonna use it. Uh, so I have a mixture of brushes. I don't think it's um, I don't think it's really gonna help you if I tell you which one's what and what size they are. I guess I've got a two, an eight, something, a one inch, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but what you're gonna wanna do first is uh, you know grab the brushes that you do like to work with and that work well for you. They can be cheap Craftsmart brushes or super expensive Princeton brushes. It really does not matter. I've got these designs by Rachel Beth Handmade Watercolor and I'm simply wetting the whole page first with my big brush and then I'm going to just add on... I say the brushes don't matter and it's literally molting on me. <laughs> um, we're gonna wet the whole page first. So you saw me just put a layer of water down. That's just gonna make our uh, watercolor blend a little easier when we go to put it down because it'll have some uh, water to play with and play in. So I'm just giving it a few bars of color. I'm not doing anything too crazy because I actually have most of the palette I wanna work with here. So I'm gonna use this vanilla frosting color to uh, just swipe across the face. I'm gonna catch some of that uh, berry cake color underneath and let it play just down here and blend together a little bit. I am so almost out of the teal sprinkles, it's not funny. I should probably use a different color, but I'm gonna try and get the most I can out of it. So I really, really liked this color, <laughs> obviously, but I, I hit pan a long time ago. So uh, I'm just gonna use this brush and uh, hopefully pick up as much teal sprinkles as I can. Now, because the paper is wet, the blend are gonna be a lot easier to manage. And uh, a lot of this texture that you see here, that's actually from the watercolor. It's not so much the paper as it is the watercolor. So if you're using a different brand of watercolor, you're probably gonna have different effects. I've even noticed a big difference between handmade watercolor and the um, and the machine manufactured watercolor. There is a big difference there too. Uh, but what you wanna do is just make sure that the paper was wet and then keep working your blends into one another. It really doesn't matter uh, for any type of precision. This is a background and a background is just gonna stay in the background. It's not gonna attract too much attention. So you don't need to worry about that. I'm going to give it a blast with the heat tool. But before I do, I'm going to get my paper towel and I'm simply gonna dab up a few of these areas. Some areas that where there's a lot of water and some I just wanna work in some texture in there, which you can do with the paper towel. So I don't really wanna remove the color, I just wanna work in some texture and then give it a blast with the heat tool. 
Now I've given that a blast with the heat tool, I'm ready to work on it a little bit more. Now the second layer I want to go in for, I don't need to wet the whole page, I actually just want to brush on some more pigment, uh, just very loose and not worrying too much about uh, you know, getting a lot of a blend. This is where I'm going to build in some more texture and this will build in some of that uh, watercolour, uh, you know, drops and um, blooms and pools and stuff, depending on how much water you add. If you want to add some more, just dip your brush in the water and just lay some water on there and that will reactivate the paints. I'm really going to try and do my best to get some of these teal sprinkles out. This might be the last time I can use the teal sprinkles, to be honest. Um, so we're just going to focus that in, really try and uh, pick up some of those interesting mixes. I found that this particular palette really does work well uh, together, like it just works with each other, so there's not too much of a learning curve uh, as far as making mud, but you just want to lay some water in. It'll just give it that nice blur, that nice soft focus kind of a look, and I'm really just going to add in that vanilla frosting colour. Uh, quite liberally around here too. It's rare that we get to use these, uh, you know, very light colors and they're usually filled with so much um, white that it, it makes them more opaque. But this one's quite nice, so I really, uh, I do enjoy that. It is more opaque than the other watercolors. The teal sprinkles I feel like is, is heaven and kind of just completely translucent, but um, you know, any of your lighter colors, there will be a white filler in there. But for this purpose, it really isn't going to matter. And uh, like we did before, just go into those areas where there's a bunch of water, pick it up a little bit, uh, move it around, dab your paper towel in there, and just get some lovely texture going on. I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna heat it. Alrighty, now I'm gonna move into my Daniel Smith palette. This is, uh, I mean, you can't buy this. These are all half pans. Some of them I purchased on Etsy. Some of them were uh, gifted to me. This is a lovely set of paints. If you've never tried Daniel Smith before, just uh, see if you can grab your hands on a dot card and uh, play with the sampler. They're just so much fun to work with. And these particular techniques work really, really well with uh, watercolors that granulate and that uh, separate. So um, we're looking here in the swatches. I'm kind of looking for things that kind of, um, you know, pull apart when you add lots of water to them. So I think I'm going to go for this naphthamide maroon. Just a little bit. I'm going to lay it into the hair. Now when you're working with watercolour, uh, it's supposed to be worked with water. So I find that a lot of people are a little hesitant to add too much water because they think all their colour is going to go away. Um, you can always add more pigment back on top. But you do want some water there to work with because that's what's going to give you all of those lovely textures and, uh, and effects. So I'm just going to add, see that? Once the paper is wet, you can simply add the, the uh, pigment back on top and it will spread out and blend really nicely for you. If there are parts that you don't like or if you think there's not enough texture, just simply blot it out. You could always give it a blast with the heat tool if you want to. Um, I like to work in other colors whilst it's still wet, so I do want to put in some of these teal sprinkles. If you're wor working wet on wet, you'll get softer blends. So uh, when you're doing your shadows, maybe try and add your shadow colors in when the, uh, when the actual color of your mid-tone is still wet. I should mention, I am not a trained watercolorist. This is simply the way that I like to do it. Um, I love the effects of it. I love playing with watercolor. I just, this is not, um, this is not a 101 class. This is simply if you're looking to get this kind of uh, modeled effect. <laughs> I should have mentioned that right at the start, but uh, I feel like most of you know that already. <laughs> If you can, dry your layers as you go. It's going to give you a much uh, easier time working other colors in and, uh, and more and more layers into your, into your work. Um, when I'm doing the face, I'm simply hitting up my shadow areas. Now, I'm not going to tell you where shadows are and what they're not and where they should be. Honestly, it all depends on your light source and I don't even use that kind of a, a reference. I keep it so loose. Um, but. There are tons of classes out there that can help you with that and maybe one day I'll end up doing a class and uh, we can go and look at that in depth. As it is, I just don't feel like you need to know it for this. So uh, I'm just going to add in some shadow colors and this is where uh, stuff starts to build up. So you can see um, I've already dried this part of the hair but I do just want to add some more of that teal in there because I feel like it uh, lost a little bit of its vibrancy. 
when I heated it. And then I'm gonna take the teal, I'm actually gonna run it through some of the face as well. If you're using a limited color palette, you wanna bring the colors uh, into the rest of your piece. So we're gonna essentially bring all the colors of the background into the foreground. Uh, and we're gonna use them as uh, shadow colors and um, just accent colors. I think it's what really uh, ties together a piece and makes it look a bit more cohesive, especially if you've got a coloring style like this that is quite random. Um, if the color palette really works well together in the background and the foreground, and and, uh, and kind of matches, I think you're gonna have a really great time. So and these little quads from Designs by Rachel Beth, it's such a great palette to uh, start with because you can stop there. I mean, <laughs> you, uh, you really don't have to use any more than that. So I'm just going to put in some of these colors. If you feel like some things have gone a little haywire and you're not happy with that, the beauty of watercolor is you can always uh, blot it up or you can re-wet it. A lot of handmade watercolors don't have a lot of uh, binders and fillers in them, so they are really easy to pick back up, which is a nice thing about that. I'm actually gonna get a smaller brush. This is only recent that I've been going uh, with tinier brushes to put in some more colors, but I just found that it really does make a difference when you're doing, um, when you're doing lots of layers. I used to think if I just had a big brush and just add it all in at once, uh, that it would, it would work. But this is where you start to get that real separation in the uh, in the pigment because you can really control where some of it goes. Watercolor is fun too because you can push it around, you can pull it in. If the substrate is wet as you're pulling it and moving it around, you can uh, encourage the colors to move where you want them to. I just think it's really fun. So, right, I put a lot on there, so I'm just going to give it a bit of a dry and blot up some of this water. So we've done one layer of shadows on the face. If you are super struggling with where to put your shadows, just hit up under the nose a little bit. Around the eyes are really important. That's what I feel like most people look at first. So really put a bunch of uh, fun colors around the eyes and, uh, and just really build up your palette in there. It doesn't have to be any kind of neat at all. I'm gonna show you a fun uh, little blending technique in a second but just adding in a lot of the, uh, the color palette around the eyes. I like to leave the lid open uh, because I end up adding some highlights on the lid. That's just personal preference, but you can always give her a lid color if you want, or him. I don't judge here. <laughs> Slow and steady kind of wins the race when you're building up these layers. And again, you really do want to kind of dry it in between. I just think it helps uh, add the depth. You can try and do it all at once, but there is going to be a difference uh, in doing all of your shadowing in one layer and doing it in separate layers. And um, you know, you might not be able to tell straight away, but I feel like I've done enough of these now to know if, if they've been done in layers or not. Especially when you start doing like the tone on tone shading. So. Here I've got a layer of teal underneath and then I've got a layer of darker teal on top. And uh, putting that depth in there, you could only do that in separate layers because if I put that all at once, it would just be the one shade of teal. So uh, that's why I think building it up in a few layers is good. I generally do two to three, so I'm gonna give this a heat and then do another third last layer. Watercolor is fun too because you can also build up your layers really slowly. So if you're feeling non-committal to a certain shade or uh, maybe if you're thinking something's gonna be too vibrant, like that pink is just a little stark for me, you can blot it up as you go or you could just wash it on really, really lightly and gradually build up your colors. And uh, it's, I mean, you don't need a lot of colors to create a ton of custom blended colors as well. So if you've got a nice little mixing palette going on, you can get a ton of different uh, shades and variations. Now I'm gonna give this little berry stained lip. So I just put a little bit of color right in the middle and then I just simply wet it out. So it just uh, fades out into the rest of the lip. I really like that stained kind of a look. I think it's a lot more whimsical than like a bold uh, red lip. I you leave that for my fashionistas. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put a bit more teal in here. Teal is, uh, is gonna be my shadow color for most of this. Be careful when you're doing shadowing uh, down by the jawline. The cheekbones are uh, over here, so it's fine to shadow over here, but for your ladies, if you're bringing the shadow underneath the jaw, you're gonna give her a five o'clock shadow, which is totally fine if you're painting a bearded lady, but otherwise, uh, maybe that's uh, something you wanna keep in mind. I feel like giving it just a little bit more intensity in the hair.
All right, I do just wanna put a little bit more color in the background. Sometimes when I've done my foreground and then I look back at the background, I feel like I might wanna intensify some of the color, uh, but that's personal preference. Honestly, we could have just left it the way it was, but I generally like to do things in a few layers when I'm working in watercolor, so it's not unusual for me to go back and forth. And uh, the beauty is when you're working so free and loose and open, uh, those are all my alternative words for messy. <laughs> but when you're working like this, uh, you really can jump back and forth. There doesn't have to be a, um, a specific process and um, like a linear workflow. You can just jump back and forth. So I'm gonna call that done with my watercolor and we're gonna move on to alcohol marker. Wait, I am totally lying, we're not done. I said I was gonna show you something and then I packed it all away. Uh, what I wanted to show you was uh, this little um, kind of shadow blotchiness behind her was actually added in after the fact. So I've got some Payne's blue gray here. I'm just going to get the pigment on the tip of my brush and I want to trace the, uh, the line. I wanna trace the silhouette of my, uh, my little forest nymph here. What I'm gonna do then is grab my brush and uh, wash it off and just have clean water on it. I wanna grab the tip and push my brush into the page and kind of wet it uh, up to around that semicircle. Now, this uh, there wasn't a lot of pigment on the top of that, so I'm gonna have to show you again. But you can see it's already started to blur out that line. Uh, and fade it into uh, like a really soft nothing. That's how you kind of get those really nice soft uh, blends, is you put the pigment down and then you attack it with just clean water. I mean clean, my water's dirty by now, but it's fine because it's all the colors of the background anyway. <laughs> You can also do this around your eyes, and that, that's what gives you a lot of that uh, sunken depth around the eyes. That's what I did for the rabbit, that bunny rabbit chicken thing, um, which a lot of people were asking about uh, what happened with the eyes. That's what I did. So all I would do is trace around the eyes like I'm doing here. So I've got the pigment just on the end of my brush, and you want to kind of load it up with pigment and make it wet too. You don't want this dry because you want it easy to uh, pull out. So this is the pigment, just following the line of where I want my shadow to be. I'm gonna wash off my brush and just get it with clean water. And then I'm just going to touch the end and let that flow into the new area that I've just wet. So this part of the brush down here is going to wet the area that that pigment's gonna end up flowing into. And then at the top, you can um, wash that off again and just you're basically just creating a little bit of a wet space for the pigment just to rush up into, and that's gonna pull it away from the, from the edge that you created and pull it into that wet area. Now, I like to do this in layers as well, so I'm just gonna give that a heat and do it again. Again, I've got the pigment just loaded at the end of my brush. I'm gonna put it down on the, uh, the outline. I'm gonna wash it all off, and then you could always create the wet space first. Just find it easier just to dip it straight in there. And then pull that up. And you'll have your nice soft blend. If you feel like it's gone too far, you can uh, put some more water there and really get it to spread. It's uh, basically the clean water is the trick to it. You just want to remember to wash your brush in between, then you're not spreading pigment around, you're just giving it a new space to move to. If you want to go back in while it's still wet, you can uh, just darken up some of the areas closer to the face, just to give it a bit more depth and make it a bit more dramatic. Again, it's up to you. I like some of the, uh, the spots to leak out into this area, so it's not a completely smooth blend, but it kind of dissipates with these little uh, water droplets, like these little water splatter effect. But that's just something you can do with your paintbrush.
All right, now I'm really done with the watercolor, so let me get that out of the way. I'm going to grab some of my alcohol markers. I want to stick with the color scheme I've been doing, so uh, let me just figure out what ones I need. All right, I think I'm good with this selection just here. These are all Copic Chows. These are alcohol-based markers. If you're worried that these are going to get ruined, uh, remember that some of that watercolor pigment may pick up on the tip of your alcohol marker. So what you want to do afterwards is give it a little bit of a clean on a, another piece of paper. I've been doing this for so long and honestly these haven't been ruined by it but if you are really really worried uh, maybe just skip this step and keep doing it with watercolor or you can do it with pencil because pencil is less likely to uh, be damaged by this. So uh, what I want to do first is go into the skin and I want to keep adding to those shadow areas. Really I'm not going to do much more then pick up some of these shadow areas. Now these alcohol markers will just bring a bit of vibrancy in where I feel like it needs some. So I'm just hitting up all the little shadow areas I want just to bring some of that color in because we used a very limited palette, especially with the skin. All we really used is that vanilla frosting color, which is a very light, light cream. Um, so just bringing in some of these warmer tones, I feel like gives a nice contrast between the, the cool look of the background. And you don't need to add the same color everywhere. You can uh, switch it up a little bit, just like we did with the watercolors. Adding in a ton of different shades and tones of the same color makes it look really interesting. And uh, it's just lots of layers. I mean, you can see I'm really not worried about where I put things, just as long as they're in the general area that I feel like they might need to be. So uh, all the shadow areas, basically. And then when you look up close at this, you'll just see a ton of different areas that are shaded. And um, it, I just think it looks super interesting to get that much depth in a certain area and, uh, and to have so many mediums in there. Like we're gonna add some pencil on top of it. I just think it gives it such an interesting look. It's not going to be for everyone. Uh, nothing ever is, but this is a specific way that I like to color. And uh, I think it, I think it's fun to try. I think it's, it really does help you loosen up. And I think that's what some people might struggle with more than anything is just feeling like uh, they feel okay just to let go because it, it can be it can be a little frustrating it can be a little annoying to uh, make mistakes especially if you're working on something that you really really like that's why I always advocate taking a photocopy of it even if it's one of my coloring pages I really don't mind if you take a photocopy of it and uh, and and just have a backup for you to use because I know what that struggle is like to to be so upset that you might have ruined something and and you have to start all over again or you don't have another chance to try it. So um, this is a great exercise in loosening up because there's really no rhyme or reason to it. You're just adding, adding lots of colors and shadows, which I just think is fun. Then right at the end, we add the highlights, which you know I love. I love to add my little white highlights. When I'm doing the lips, again, I'm only focusing color on the center of those lips just to put the depth right in there and um, give her a little Cupid doll lip. Don't forget to do the ears and don't forget to do down the neck as well. Even some of the hair, I hit up the outside of the eyes with a darker color. Don't be afraid to really add the depth around the eyes because that's the most alluring part. I feel like anyway, even if you want to grab like a really bold color. Now this might be too dark, so let's just put a little bit in there. <laughs> but yeah, just around the eyes, around especially around the edges, really, really alluring. I love it. Giving her that smoky eye look. Now I'm just going to grab one pencil and the pencil that I want is a light blue. This is a Faber-Castell Polychromos. This is light cobalt. I love, love, love these pencils. They're so easy to work with. They're oil based. So they layer on top of things just beautifully and uh, they blend with each other like nothing I've ever tried. So uh, they are very expensive. I would advocate finding a sale and uh, purchasing, <laughs> purchasing them at a sale price if that's something you're interested in. I got these on a mega sale, which is the only reason I could justify getting them at the time. Uh, what I want to do is just hit up some of these lines and just really add in this bright pop of cobalt because why not? Where have we been putting all that color? I just want to give it like this kind of cobalt highlight, if you will. So just a lot of the highlight areas. I'm just simply adding in some of this cobalt uh, just for a bit of texture and just just for a fun accent, I guess. That's all I need of that. Now I'm gonna grab my white Uniball Signo and this is where I, oh, you know what? I haven't even given her eye color. I feel like I wanna do something a little bit drastic. So maybe this one, this is a Sakura Souffle pen. It's like 
a lime neon green. I think it might pop really well. All right, now she's got crazy eyes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to grab my zebra sign pen and just uh, blacken up some of the pupil area in those eyes. I'm also going to re-outline the corner of the eyes. Just bring back some of that clarity that I've lost because I've painted over it and I've drawn over it and you know just covered it with pigment so I do want to bring out some of that again give her a few more lashes because this is me <laughs> this is me <laughs> has anyone seen the greatest showman I uh, was obsessed with the soundtrack for about I want to say three weeks maybe and all I had on was never enough and I was just belting my life away and I can't sing so uh, that was really funny but uh, that's where I got that reference from right I've added in too much black in the eyes I actually don't like that but you know what I'm gonna add the white in and hopefully I can fix what I don't like <laughs> Just putting in, again, do not be so precious about this stuff. You can always go back over it if you make a mistake. You're just adding in highlights, like it's not the end of the world. Uh, on the lips, I do want some down there. Give her a bit of gloss look. I love to put little dots on the cheek to look like glitter. It's usually where I wear my glitter. I like to put them in the middle of the eyelid. I think I've said all this before. I really, I feel like I remember making a video about this. Not specifically, but I did mention it. Maybe it was in one of the stamp series videos. Just gonna put some down here. Just gonna give a little bit of a squiggle down here. A bit of a shoulder glisten moment. Some down here. I'm gonna hit up some of this hair too. Her hair's just been conditioned and blown out, so it looks all glossy and nice. Uh, what else am I gonna do? You know what, I'm going to grab this is such an unnecessary step, but it really does bug me when I go over things with pigment uh, and there's supposed to be a black line. I don't like to add it back into black because I think it gets too stark, but I will probably use a, um, a very fine gel pen and just darken up some of those lines again, just to bring back that sharp look. The step that we have to do before the last one, believe it or not, it's almost finished, is add in all the leaves. So this is gonna take me a hot minute, so I'm just going to uh, speed you through this. <laughs> All right, I've done a terrible job at that, but I just needed to show you that that's where you add the leaves, and I've just done it with the white Uniball Signo. Wow, that road is loud. I'm literally now facing the road uh, since my office changed. Uh, I love the light in here, and I love this setup so much better, so I'm okay to deal with the road noise. Let me know if you're not, because then I might have to start doing more voiceovers. I really don't know if you can hear it that badly, though. I think it's fine. It adds an edge to the video. So. <laughs> uh, so anyway, this is pretty much it. The last step we have to do is actually get some of this copper candles color, which again, uh, for the nine billionth time, is my favorite metallic watercolor of all time. This is the most perfect formulation of any metallic I've ever seen. Whoop, there we go. She went a little nuts. Uh, even if I tried to blot this up, it's already down. So let's just leave it. I probably should have not done it all over the desk. It's okay, it's watercolor, it will come off with water. I just should have, I should have known. <laughs> I'm gonna get a bristly brush so I can do a lot more of the fine splatter texture because I really love that as well. Just adding this over the top, I mean, you might get upset because you might be like, oh, I've done all that work and now there's splatters all over it. You don't have to add the splatters, obviously, but I just think this adds such an extra element in metallic, like it's just, it's so stunning to look at, and I, I mean, I'm adding way too much right now because I'm excited, but whoops. <laughs> uh, I mean, I could blot it off, but it's, it's on there now. You get what I mean. So uh, do as I say and not as I do. Show a little bit of restraint in this section. It's still gonna look fine, to be honest, um, but it's not gonna look like the first one. If you're great at florals, these sticks, these twigs, antlers, uh, whatever you wanna call them, they're great for you to be able to do your florals. I'm not personally huge into doing florals. I love to look at them, uh, but I haven't taken the time to learn much about it. So I'll leave that up to you and your expertise, but I'd love to see some florals up there. Um, if you wanna draw little creatures up there, if you want to, um, I don't know, berries, apples, Lemons. I don't think lemons grow on things like that, but whatever you want to try, I think I'd be uh, really down to see. Oh, by the way, I taped this to 
the side of an Amazon cardboard box. Nothing too fancy over here. <laughs> and I said this before in my other coloring tutorial, but if you ever go outside the edges, that's why we have a uniball signal in the world, just to fix that up. It is such a minor detail, but sometimes it really does bug me. And there you have it, the before and after. Now, I use the same palette. You can see the colors are a bit more vibrant on this one. I've gone a bit darker and deeper. I think I got a bit more courageous with the, um, with the techniques. So I went and added things a bit more bold. This, you can see, was very reserved. There's a lot more of a light wash, um, a lot more subtlety in this one. Um, but it's gonna be up to you. If you're heavy-handed, you might end up with something even more vibrant than this. If you change up the color palette, it's gonna work great for you as well. I'd encourage you to stick with three main colors. So here you can see we've got a teal, we've got the skin tone, which was a vanilla, and uh, we've added in some of the deeper tones, especially over here, I added in a lot more of that warmth. And then we've got the berry color here, whatever. Um, <laughs> do a tri-color arrangement. Uh, just grab some three colors. I think it'll work really well for you and then add in uh, this metallic overlay and the speckles in the end if you want. If you don't trust yourself, practice off to the side before you commit to doing it on this because uh, you could end up adding a lot like I did. I don't hate that. Uh, this is going to end up in my journals anyway, so it's not going to be the end of the world for me, but I do know that it's, uh, it's a bit of a bold move to do right at the end, <laughs> so you might want to practice or uh, just forego that step altogether. But as you can see, the hot press paper does really, really beautifully, and uh, I wanted to encourage you that if you were just looking to try the cold press, maybe give the hot press a go and, um, and see if you can't make it work for you. I totally understand if it's just not your thing and you don't want to try it. I'm not going to be offended. But either way, I hope that you learned something from the tutorial. Let me know down below if there was something that really stood out to you as interesting or you might want to try or you think was totally irrelevant. I'm down for all kinds of comments. And um, if you like me, if you like the video, if you like watercolor, if you like color, if you like road noises, um, just give me a like, uh, the little thumbs up button. My fat little hands. <laughs> uh, the thumbs up would be uh, doing wonders for my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already and you see yourself doing that in the near future. And other than that, um, just wanna say thanks for learning again. Okay, bye.